Let's learn how to use multi-channel ADC with STM32 microcontroller. We will be interfacing multiple analog sensor with ADC pins of STM32 F446 nuclear board. Here LDR light dependent resistor and potentiometer part will be used to measure light intensity and variable resistor respectively. Thanks to Altium software for sponsoring this video. Altium is all-in-one platform for all the needs of PCB design. The cloud-based Altium 365 offers seamless collaboration between engineers along with version control capabilities. Please visit the link in the video description to learn more about Altium 365. With built-in octo parts, engineers can quickly search electronic components with accurate and complete data for millions of electronic components. You can download free trial with the link given in a video description. Also, you can sign up with the link altium.com forward slash yt slash binary updates. So let's create a fresh new project. Click on file, click on new, click on STM32 project. And then we have to select the microcontroller stm 32 f 446 re that's our target microcontroller select the nuclear board click on next then we have to give name to the project i would going to call it as a multi-channel adc and then click on finish as you can see the project is configured and we have here stm32 microcontroller on in the left band we have a pinout and configuration and then we have all the peripherals here so now we can start setting up every peripheral so we don't have to change anything into the system core because we are using stm32 f4 nuclear board and it runs on 16 megahertz internal clock so we will jump straight into the analog section and we are using adc1 so we will select the adc1 because we are using multi-channel adc in stm32 microcontroller i can move this microcontroller a little bit here and make it zoom so you can see everything properly so I have to select the two channels as a multi channel so let me check this in 0 and in 1 so these are basically in 0 is basically a PA0 pin in 1 is basically a PA1 pin these are like a multiple analog pins on STM32 microcontroller that we are using then we have to select the parameter settings here and under the parameter setting you can see in ADC the mode is independent mode if you have not watched my previous video lesson about ADC in STM32 microcontroller I have explained everything in much detail please check the link in the video description to get that video access and then you can see the clock prescaler is divided by two resolution is 12 bit everything looks absolutely fine the scan conversion mode should be enabled because we are using a multi-channel adc then we can see here number of conversion is one so we have to make it as a two because we are using two channels on the adc one and then as soon as we select the number of conversion to become a two then we can have a rank one and rank two so rank one is basically for pa0 pin and rank two is basically for pa1 pin so let me expand the rank one and you can see rank one is a associated with PA0 pin that's basically a channel 0 sampling time we have to change it to 480 cycles similarly for rank 2 let me expand this you can see the channel is channel 0 so this is one that we have to set into the channel 1 so the rank 2 will set as a channel 1 and then in the drop down sampling time we have to set as a 480 cycles once this is done we are using this multi-channel ADC means ADC into the multi-channel mode with the help of DMA and interrupt so let me check this DMA settings here because we have to add the DMA with our ADC let's click on add now if you wonder what is dma dma is basically a direct memory access that is a feature in stm32 and arm microcontroller this basically help us to move the data in our microcontroller from one register to other register without using a cpu intervention i mean the cpu is not used so dma handle the data transmission separately so this basically speed up our communication into the microcontroller so let me click on add button because we want to add the dma with adc so in the drop down we have to select the adc1 because we are using adc dma with the adc1 and then you can see further down below here a dma request settings and the mode is normal here we have to use the dma in circular mode and then you can see there are other options but we don't have to change anything so we are just adding the dma into the circular mode that's all we have to do then we have to get into the nvic setting option here in nvic we have the adc1 interrupt here so we have to check this box because we are using an interrupt with our adc as well then we have to click on this system view option here and then we have to click on this nvic settings this is very very important and then we have to click on this adc1 interrupt because we have to set the pre preemption priority you can see the preemption priority is zero that we have to set for one if you don't change this then your project may not work okay that's all the setting we have to do for the adc once this is done then we have to expand the connectivity section in connectivity we are using the use at two that's basically a uart 2 because we will going to print our adc sensor values on our serial terminal software to see what is the sensor value so let's select the uart 2 and on stm32 f1 nuclear board we will be having this usb connector associated with the uart 2 
so we don't need any external detail converter so let me click on this drop down menu i will select the ui2 into asynchronous mode the portrait is 115200 the word length is 8 bit and everything looks absolutely fine nothing else that we have to do here so let's generate the code so click on this top left corner device configuration code generation button here and then click on yes and this basically gives us the main.c file it configure the project and it will take a couple of seconds now we have our main.c file so we can start writing a code you can see the user code begin include so we need to add some basic include statement so hash include i would going to add std io.h that's a c standard input output header file then i also need to add include string.h that's basically string header file these are the basic thing that i need in my project and then you can see user code begin private variable i would have to define a couple of private variable u int 16 underscore t if you wonder why i'm taking 16 bit variable integer variable because our adc is 12 bit so data will be 12 bit it requires 16 bit variable to store the data and for pa0 pin i will be connecting an ldr so i'm going to make a variable name as a lux and i will define the value as zero so pa0 sensor data so the sensor connected to pa0 pin will be stored into this lux variable similarly i will have to define one more variable and i call this another variable as a part for potentiometer because i'm going to connect a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer with a pa1 pin once this is done then i have to define one integer 16 bit buffer and i would like to call this as a raw values buffer and i'm going to make the size as a 2 unsigned integer 16 bit buffer and then i have to make one character buffer so care msg ms G and this will be a 20 character long buffer so this will be needed to store the data then let me go down below so here we have the main function that's where the code execution start and then let me scroll down below and you can see the user code begin here so the first thing that we have to do is we have to start the adc so hall underscore start adc underscore start and uh, start and then i'm going to use this function hall adc start dma and i'm going to use the adc1 handle and then there is this parameter that i have to pass and uh, let me make a little bit of space here so it will be u in 32 underscore t and uh, this will be a pointer uh, to this raw values buffer okay and then the length will be a two unsigned integer buffer buffer size is basically a two unsigned integer so that's all so this is basically to start the adc into the dma mode it uses interrupt as we did the settings and in a while loop we will start writing our code here okay in the first place that we have to do is we have to check whether the conversion is completed adc conversion for multi-channel adc in stm32 microcontroller now because we are using an interrupt let me show you into the drivers we have to expand the whole drivers here in source file we have this adc.c file if we go there then you can see here we have a conversion complete callback so this is basically a weak function but this basically help us to track whether when the conversion is completed adc conversion is completed so we copy this piece of code here from this file and then we go to main.c file here and uh, here we have to scroll up a little bit here and you can see user code begin here private user code and here i'm going to put this code here okay and uh, let me delete this this is not very important for us and we will have to define one variable that will be u int 8 underscore t this is unsigned integer 8 bit this variable we will use as a flag so conversion complete it equals to zero so this variable will be used as a flag so let me copy this and in whenever the conversion is completed means whenever we receive the data from multiple adc pins on the adc channel then we will make the conversion completed to become a one okay that's how we will going to track whether the adc received the data and conversion is completed or not okay so let me copy this this code here and then let me go down below where we left off under the while loop here and uh, i'm going to say while because here i have to check if the conversion is completed okay and conversion completed is basically this conversion completed flag so i'm going to check whether the conversion is completed if the adc conversion is completed then i'm going to go forward and then i'm going to say for loop here and uh, under the for loop let me make the for loop here and here i'm going to make u int 8 underscore t i equal to zero so this is the variable and i should be less than the adc basically basically hadc one dot control space init dot nbr number of conversion basically so what it does is basically i will start with zero and it will check number of conversion and if you remember the number of conversion we set it for two so it will be less than two and then we have to say i plus plus okay now it says okay it's gone <laughs> the warning is gone okay i i was just a little bit shocked everything is right and why this was showing like but you can see here the for loop will loop into this two times and then we 
we will say lux variable is equals to now here we have to store the value the value will be stored into raw values buffer and the raw values zero so this is basically where we will store the first value and this will be u in 16 underscore t this basically store the first uh, parameter so let me copy this entire line of code and i will put it here and here i'm saying that i will take a raw values one so this raw value zero will be a data coming from pa0 pin and this raw values one will store the data coming from a pa1 pin and this variable will be named as a point so lux will store the data from raw value zero and pot will store the data coming from the raw values one okay that's how the buffer will going to store the data coming from the adc okay once this is done i'm going to say s printf okay and here i'm going to say i want to store that into the message buffer and then to look better i would say light for light intensity lux percent h u okay so that's basically to represent a 16 bit long unsigned integer variable that we are using in our project okay and then i'm going to say slash r slash t slash t so slash r is basically a carriage return and this will be for the space as i said you know if you want this basics then please check my previous adc video lesson i have explained that this code is a little bit longer so a little bit difficult to keep track of everything so please go ahead and check that in the description section so once this is done then i'm going to pass the variable lux so variable lux value will be passed here and it will be stored finally into this message buffer and then i'm going to print on the serial terminal software hall ur underscore control space transmit because i want to transmit you are to handle and then i have to make the variable here so why my cursor move uh u int uh, 8 underscore t and this will be a pointer this will be a pointer to the message msg buffer and then the size will be str len string length and this will be basically a size of message buffer the timeout will be hall underscore max underscore delay so that's basically how it is let me copy this two lines of code and i'm going to paste it here oh this code is very very long <laughs> So for the second uh, variable, this will be instead of light, this will be a pot for potentiometer. And here we don't need to use this slash T. So there's an extra slash T. So I'm going to say that slash R for carriage written. And then I'm going to say slash N for new line. I hope this uh, looks okay. And then this variable will be a pot because this pot variable will variable value will be pass it here. And then it will be stored into this message buffer. And finally, finally this message buffer we will print on a serial terminal software. So this will print the light intensity lux and this will print the potentiometer resistor value right so as soon as we rotate the potentiometer the resistance will change that's all basically that we have to do and then we have to add a little bit of delay it's not a good practice to add delay maybe you can instead of putting this code here it's better you can use it into the main function itself okay so let me show you into this main function itself because i'm making this video i want to show you the data live onto the video output i'm going to printing onto the while loop because while loop executes over and over again so it will print continuously so it will look a little bit better for me to help you show output so all control space and i'm going to add the delay of let's say if i add let's say one second so 1000 milliseconds okay so because otherwise you would say we are using an interrupt then why you are putting into the while loop okay this looks a little bit contradictory but this is just to show you that this you know multi-channel adc will be read by this way but if i write the code this i would basically use a different tactics right and just if i want to just to read once i would going to put it here into the main function okay but for this video i'm going to show you into the the while loop so i will show you live every output so that's all what we have to do now let me scroll down below i want to show you something the adc configuration so you can see the adc one in it here and you can see all the parameters that we have set up okay like the number of conversion two and all other things let me scroll down here i want to show you something so you can see this adc configuration is for the adc channel zero that's basically a pa0 pin and this adc configuration is for pa1 pin that's the second channel on the adc one and you can see the rank is two and adc channel one so sometimes what happens is this qyde if you change something in a live and if you don't follow my instructions step by step and if you keep changing going into ioc file and keep the, making some changes you might sometimes see this s config channel that means the statement to initialize the adc channel one will not show up in that case you have to add this manually that's why i especially 
uh, took this time to show you this configuration this is where actually adc is configured okay so the, here the adc channel 0 is configured and here the adc channel 1 is configured and here into the while loop we are just using this reading and printing onto the serial terminal software that's all what's happening here so the code is pretty straightforward you can see here this is the main very very important conversion complete callback so this flag basically takes care of conversion is completed or not so let me build the code so you see in top left corner there's a hammer icon so let me click on that so this will basically build the code for us you can see there are zero error and zero warning let's set up the socket for the ldr and the potentiometer so here we have the ldr so let me connect the ldr first and then i need a 10 kilo ohm resistor to create a voltage divider socket so one end of the ldr and the resistor will be common right so this is a common terminal and then we need to take a potentiometer i'm going to take a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer so i'm going to place it here on a breadboard something like this okay so this is how the bedboard this is how the potentiometer will be placed and then we have to connect the jumper wire so the free end of the ldr i'm going to connect to the 3.3 volt so this will be a 3.3 volt and then the common end of the ldr and the resistor will going to connect to the pa0 pin that's a adc0 and then the free end of the resistor will going to connect to the ground pin right so that's how we're going to set up the ldr socket and then for potentiometer we need to take one jumper wire so one end of the pot will going to connect to 5 volt so here goes the 5 volt and then we have to take one more jumper wire where we're going to connect the output from the potentiometer to the pa1 pin and then we have to take one more jumper wire so the one end of the pot will going to connect to the ground pin right so that's how the circuit setup will complete right so let me upload the code so click on this run button on top menu bar click on ok and you can see in lower right corner the code upload starts and let's wait for download verified now you can see the download verified successfully so let's open a putty software then we have to select the serial and then we have to select the com port in my case my stm32 nuclear board is connected as a com7 if you don't know your com port then you have to check into the device manager the speed is basically a baud rate 115200 in our case and then we have to click on open and you can see the data starts streaming from the sensor so this light is basically a light intensity coming from ldr connected to pa0 pin and pot is basically a potentiometer value that is connected to pa1 pin so if i cover my ldr and then if i press reset button you can see the value drop down so you can see the value drop below 2000 if i remove my hand and then i reset again you see again jump up to more than 2000 and the potentiometer value if i rotate the potentiometer knob and then reset and you see the potentiometer value will drop somewhere around 300 or something like that so basically it works right so let me move the potentiometer further and then reset again and you see the value again changes for potentiometer so i hope you have found this video educational and entertaining into the next video lesson we will going to learn about pulse width modulation and i will also be covering an i2c and the spy communication protocol with stm32 microcontroller so please check the video description for more details about the upcoming video lessons i hope you have found this video educational and entertaining if you are trying to solve a problem and learn embedded systems check out our embedded system career plus course the link is given in a video description or in a comment section it's all you need to become a professional embedded developer Thank you very much for your time and see you into the next video. Bye-bye for now.